well there we go <laughs> here we are okay yeah. cool um I was hello everyone and welcome to the open clarion user group webinar for wednesday the 3rd of august 2022 keep going keep going this keep you can, you can, uh, uh, with me today, you know, doing all the heavy lifting, the button pressing, the sound effects and everything else you hear is John. Hey, John, how's it going? Great. Great. That's all you can say. That's all you can say. We are doing questions and answers today. So if you do have questions, go ahead and put them up in the questions box as soon as you like. And when all the questions are gone, then we shut it down. Although we, we tend to banter for 60 seconds to give you time to dream up a question. Otherwise, we're out of here. We're gone. Dinner time. Yeah, we can we can talk about um, CIDC production, Bruce. Yes, either here or or after the thing. It doesn't <laughs> matter. After. I don't think the um, yeah CIDC coming along. It's about six weeks away now. Hey, eh? that's what I hear. Just yeah, something yeah. like that. Anyway, so um, getting getting ready for it. Getting ready for it. So Each how many weekends do I do I have? Let's see. Whoops. Oh no, <laughs> I shrunk that everything on my computer. Everything on my computer is shrunk. Honey, I shrunk thing. the computer apps. Yeah. Oh well. I I don't know. I need to turn that shake thing off. You know when you shake a window, then everything just goes away just all minimizes that's what i just did i shook a little <laughs> calendar and everything just went away so now i gotta figure out what was i looking at there we go uh one more thing there all right anyway i was seeing how many weekends i had left all right so i have one two three four five six weekends to get it all together there we go have you got it all together him in case you're wondering, we're talking about CIDC 2020, which of course is happening in 2022. Because why would you want to do something called 2020 in 2020? Turns out no one wants to do much of anything in 2020. So it's been postponed until 2022. It's coming up now, September 22nd. If you go to CIDC2020.com, you will find all the details and schedule and everything else there. Uh, just because you can. Well, I, there's I no was, questions, uh... John. Everyone's yeah. here to learn something, but no questions. I can show you this this um, background image I got. You can say, tell me if you like it. Oh, that is quite nice, actually. You like that? I mean, it, it does it. cut off the actual part of Africa that we're actually going to be in. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, that's that's surely a detail well worth like not worrying about. Yeah, it's um, I got a, a trial subscription to Adobe for a month, so it gives me access to all sorts of really great clip art and stuff to make things with. So that that's one of the things I made. It'll probably be a, one of the backgrounds that we'll see in the stream, I would think. So, yes. Wow, there really are no questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are we, what are we, what are we? I've been working on X-Files actually. So much documentation. I'm working my see, way through the, uh, the, the test oh, app. X I don't question. know why you're wasting your time on it. Uh, XML, <laughs> which is not even a thing anymore. I mean, why? <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> well, what are you doing? It it'll be it'll be it it does have some use cases. To be fair, some that's the key. Some not nothing that we really want or care about. Move to JSON. The J files is working well. It I is. Just, it works I really just well. I used it the other day, and it's working great. Oh, we have it's a question really well. from Mark too. So Andrew's getting his question together and uh, we can take Mark's in the meantime. How's that? We can do that. Hey Mark, how's yeah. it going? Hey, it's going great guys, how are you? Yeah, not too bad. Good, hey, um, my question is I kind of uh, fell into this um, uh, rich text format ability. Um, 
I originally defined a field to be a memo, um, but then I changed my mind and I didn't want it to be a memo. Uh, but when it was a memo, I had it set as a rich text format. So when I changed it from a memo to a string, um, I went back to my screen and lo and behold, the string field that's on the form now is rich text format. So I can cut and paste uh, uh, all kinds of characters. But um, yeah, when I have just a simple string field that's already been defined, let's say description, and it's defined as a string in the database, it's defined as a string on the, the form, um, doesn't look like there's an opportunity to change it to a rich text format. Um, is there a way to do that? Strings don't do rich text. I believe text controls do rich text. Okay. So I kind so, of just, so, so, so even though it looks like it's working, it's probably not a reliable work. Oh no. So you need to understand the difference between a data type in your okay. dictionary. Okay. Where you've changed from memo to string. Right. And controls on a window where you can have text controls or string controls. Both of those sources, the the, source, the 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 database declaration is is independent from the control on the window. Okay. So to to make a rich text control on a window, you add a rich text control or a text control, in other words, and tick okay. on the rich text button, um, and then you have a rich text control. You can point that at any data field you like, as far as I know. Okay. Cool. That, that answers my question. Thank you. That helps me understand it and uh, that there is a way to do it the correct way. And I just appreciate that. And, uh, thanks. Cool. Yeah. Andrew, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? We can, indeed. Okay. Uh, Bruce, first, I want to thank you for all uh, the responses to the various emails I've sent you about some of the tool sets and whatnot. Um, so this this is kind of a... Uh, this kind of, I feel like this is a newbie question, although I've been working periodically with Clarion for some time. Um, I've got a, I'm working on a program um, to connect to a, a brokerage service and uh, uh, through API, uh, so on and so forth. Um, I have a API gateway set up on Linode um, that allows me to send requests and get data and so on and so forth. The better way to handle it though is to use their local host software on my notebook. But when I set up, uh, when, I, when I direct it to use local host, it doesn't communicate. And I, as I mentioned in the write up to the message or the question, I'm pretty sure it has to, I'm pretty sure it's a firewall issue, but Given that you didn't have any questions a moment ago, I thought I'd, <laughs> I thought I'd fire that one your way to see if there's sure. any 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 guidance on that. That's so, to look for that. so this it's worth pointing out that localhost isn't a, a thing; it's it's an address. It okay. means this machine. So your program doesn't talk to localhost; it talks to something else that's addressed as localhost. Do you understand what I'm getting at here? Yeah. So presumably they're offering a program to you that you can talk to. And their program will listen on local host. Is that correct? I, uh, let's say yes. <laughs> okay. This is, is this area, a, I'm really, really dark. Okay. So is this a network? Uh, is it not a network? Is this a networking API connection? as in HTTP and all those kind of things. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. So you your program will be a client and their program will be a server. Okay. Their program will listen on a particular port number and your program will talk to that program on that particular port number. Now okay. an address for a, a networking program is made up of two parts, the IP part and the port number. Now, what they mean by local host is that if you're running the program on the same machine as the client, um, there's this magic address called localhost, which just means this machine. Okay. Um, it translates to the IP address 127.0.0.1, which it points to this machine. You still have to get the port numbers to match though. Okay. So their program will 
their documentation or, or their program setup or something will say, I'm listening on a port number. Let me, let me give you a demonstration of what I mean here. Yeah, they've, they've, for what it's worth, they've listed as localhost 5000. There we go. So port number is 5000. Right. So when you talk to that, assuming that program is running, mm -hmm. then you're going to talk to that program as HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 5000. Depending on, on what client software you're using, you're using Netwalk, you're using built in Claren, what you're using? Uh, Netwalk. Okay, so in the Netwalk NetWeb client class, there's a server and a port. And so you would fill in the those those parameters. So for example, here's a net demo program. So this is just a an, an, an arbitrary client, right? So here's my server. And you would have here 127.0.0.1, or if you preferred the words local host, you could do that too. And you said the port, oops, ooh, not too many zeros. And then when you'd make a request, it will talk to that to that thing. Now this, this example is a, a better one would be web client. All right, so you're gonna talk to local host colon. 5,000 and presumably you've got some sort of URL or you're doing a post or something along those lines. Right. So you put that in there and some data goes here and you would do a post and it would talk to that thing. Is nothing listening? So it, it fails to connect, no connection could be made. Okay, okay. Right. I, I'd totally forgotten about that. So, so um, I, I'd forgotten about this application that came with uh, NetTalk, and that would probably be a great place to go first to find out what the, you know, what's That's going That's a good on. place to start because yeah. it allows you to, to fiddle and to play, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, do they mention if it's HTTP or HTTPS? HTTPS. Okay, so in that situation, you put S in there. Um, you've got some options that you can play around with here, but for the most part, you just put an S in, it'll go and Again, obviously there's, okay. there's nothing listening on that port, right? If I make something that's listening, uh, let me just put a, put a server on. Uh, this is probably not gonna do what we want, but you could run any of the network examples. Listen on, well, uh, I could listen on 127 or I could just leave it blank. Uh, listen on port 5000. I'll make it, and I'll say listen. And now if I do a post, uh, post here, we'll move that out the way. You can see an incoming packet came in. Uh, the remote TLS coming in, Ellie does not match the server name, localhost. So what that's saying here, this is the client site now. He's saying, hang on, you, you wanted me to, re to verify the common name, which I did and the certificate didn't match. So let's try that again. I'm not gonna verify the common name this time. And you'll see a whole bunch of stuff came through here. Okay. Can you run me that, back through the, the, the common name part that you were referring to? Okay, so when you've got a certificate, um, because it's HTTPS talking to local host, okay. the, there must be a certificate, else also won't be able to listen to HTTPS. But that certificate won't be trusted. It'll be it'll it'll be untrusted and or have the wrong name in it, one or both, because you can't get a certificate on local hosted. You can't get a trusted certificate on local hosted. It just doesn't. Um, you can get uh, yeah okay. So one of the things you can do when you're setting up your options, and remember this this example is just setting properties in the class. Hmm. So you, you would do it in code. Is you can say, hang on, don't don't worry if it's not trusted. And that's very common for land certificates that you don't trust them. So you say, yeah, don't worry if it's not trusted. I'm not expecting it to be trusted. Okay. And in this particular case, because the certificate that the server listened on doesn't match that name there. It's like, hang on, it's it's a certificate for the wrong server. And we're going, yeah, yeah, we kind of we knew that. We can don't worry about that. So those are the kind of two things you can not worry about. Now, in a, in a local host context, um, that's no big deal. Obviously you would, you would care a lot 
if you were going out to the internet and talking to a server, you would want to verify those things. You want to make sure the certificate is trusted. One of the things that confused me about this was that I was I was using Insomnia to to um, I can connect through localhost using Insomnia, and there's probably some setting in there that I've that I've set that I've overlooked, uh, but I can't I can't get to it through the through the app that I've built. And I think I'll spend some time. Go ahead. Yeah, play around with this guy, and if you don't have any enjoy this, then I talk with him not tomorrow, so we can carry on okay. there. Okay, thanks a lot, Bruce. Pleasure. That's it. <laughs> That's it <for> questions. <laughs> Nothing else. Can you hear the train? I'm sure you can hear the train. Right? No, you can't really. You can't hear the train, really. Oh, Merle has a question. I was going to say no. I can't hear the train. Wow, it's so um, loud. <laughs> it's an impressive <laughs> microphone. Uh, Mel, talk to me. There we go. Mel, how's it going? Guys, can you hear me? We can, Mel, yes. Uh, I'm hoping this is just something really simple that I don't know. Uh, which is usually the case. I have quite a few customers using my CapeSoft uh, SMS texting feature for notifications to their customers. And on Bruce's recommendation, we moved that to Twilio and it's working great. I have one customer, no matter what I do, I can't get it to work on her computer, including uninstalling her antivirus security suite turning off Windows Firewall. It, okay, stop. And yet I take her credentials, put it on my machine, everything works perfectly. So it's okay. nothing to do with Twilio or her settings. Yes. I was wondering if there was a .NET version or something that had to be installed, okay. what could be It won't be on? .NET because it's not a .NET program, but um, if you're talking to Twilio, then it's over an HTTPS connection. So in the network documentation right here in the index, um, deploying, a TLS yeah. client or server. I and looked in your at that case, section. A TLS server client. Was it the so Visual Studio? Yeah. That's that's the most likely one. That's you can the, always tell. I saw because that. you you just run that guy there. Okay. So if you run him, and it runs okay. So if I'll run I'll run one and you can see what it looks like. Um, let's see, Claren. It it that'll be copied into your folder. So uh, examples, let's just pick up a network. I mean, I saw it doesn't that in the documentation when I was trying to read everything to figure it yeah. out. And I thought, well, that didn't say anything about SMS. That's probably something different. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, 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 it's for any TLS client. And if you're talking to Twilio, it'll be over TLS. If you're talking to anything, it'll be over TLS. Okay. So if you, if you go here and you see run open SSL and you just run it, if it's working, you'll get a prompt like that. Okay. If the Visual C runtime is missing, then you'll get a, one of those normal Windows can't find this DLL errors. So that's always your best thing to know whether you've done all of this stuff that it's saying here. Yeah. Let's just run that guy and see what happens in your I, EXE folder. Okay. Yeah, I, I read that in the documentation. I just didn't realize it applied to me. To you what just I was ignored doing. it. Yes, yeah. I did. <laughs> you just you read it. You thought, eh. Bruce uh, probably doesn't mean this. It's probably no, just he was just yeah. random typing no, at the time. It doesn't say SMS there. It must not apply to me. Is what I was thinking. No, no, no. It's just TLS. So, yeah, it's, it's, right. it's a failure of the person writing the document. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's I'll, not I'll you. Do, it's I'll not go you, with Merle. that. I'll go with that. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not I that I didn't understand. It's got to be Bruce's fault. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Well, cool. As usual, thank you guys. This will be an easy fix, and she'll be so happy. Uh, hope I hope you I charge it a lot, Mel. I have to tell you, Bruce, it is a wonderful feature. I had a little tiny village in Illinois, only a hundred and some houses. They're so small, they're not even considered a, a uh, city. And I, <laughs> I installed your little SMS program. You helped me get going with Twilio, and they sent out a notification to everybody in their town cell phone of some water problem they had. They had to boil their water because something terrible happened or something. And they were so happy. It was just wonderful they were able to do that. And I, I your product your, made it possible. 
So. Excellent. I know that's good. I, I think your definition of city is different to our definition of city. Um, so, well, but I they think have that's to have true. I don't know what it is here. Five hundred houses, a thousand houses to be big enough to be a city. Yeah, you see, we would call that a village or a, a pushing a town. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, have... we just we just use the word differently. That's fine. <laughs> so, so well, city here would be a big place, like. To be a city, it would be big, um, it, relatively speaking. But most places here are towns. Like like if you drove around the countryside, you'd be driving through towns, not cities. Well, but that's here, just... here we even call them a city if they only have five or 600 houses. <laughs> yeah, <So. that> is... <laughs> Remember, I'm out where the deer and antelope play. Yes, exactly. Uh, and yes, literally, uh -huh. I've been driving and had antelope leap across the road in front of me in Western Kansas. So it's, and it's quite the beautiful sight. But uh, anyway, thank you guys so much. I figured Pleasure it was something well. simple like that, that I just didn't know. Thank you guys. Cool. Excellent. Bye -bye. John's out to rule the world. <laughs> Do, 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 do. All right. Well, 20 minutes, John. They've had their chances. They've had their chance. I love the oh, happy there's kid. Mark. There's Mark. Yeah, she's doing all right. More natural questions. Yeah, I'm going to be really sorry about that. <laughs> hey. So, John, no little finger at the corner of your mouth? I don't understand. Well, I, I, Austin Powers has a, a hairless cat. Oh, I this, well, this of course. This would be a the, the James Bond cat. So Indeed. I wouldn't be doing, wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> Unless you were trying to parody anything. So, True. And diff, certainly a different issue. Um, so, uh, Bruce, I derived a class from the net client, and I'm using it to do some inter program messaging. And um, well, one of the things I noticed is um, I've got a the the polar, which is I adapted your polling example. Um, what I notice is the my program that's the poly, if I start that after the polar, um, it doesn't respond to the messages. Um, and so what I have done is in my polling cycle, I added the announce um, method call in from my object, um, thinking that that would cause the pollee to um, start to see those broadcast messages. Am I Am I doing something reasonable and proper, or am I on the wrong track? You're probably on the wrong track. Um, so I should just, for the purpose of people watching, we're talking about a net client object here, not a net web client. So that's quite a big difference. And are you talking about a net auto client, I presume? Um, yeah, I'm just trying to send a, a little message across to a different XE that says, hey, are you still working right? And then I want that to receive the message and, and do this a is little on your homework. LAN, right? This is on actually this operates on the same same machine. Okay. So let's 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 bring one up here. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know, no, there is a net auto one in here. Net auto, what do we got? Uh, chat, chat will do. Yeah, okay. So chat acts as, a, as an example here because we can open up two windows. We could actually open up two instances of the program. Uh, let's open up another instance here. And this could be on the LAN or could be on the same machine, doesn't matter. So there's sure. chat. Um, so what's happening with net auto is that it's um, you've got under the hood there's a um, 
auto detect mechanism using UDP um, connections so that they can find each other. So you don't have to know the IP address of these machines. If it's on the LAN, it'll appear here. Um, I've run two on the same machine, but it would be the same if I didn't. Sure. If I ran them across the network. And you can see this guy's name is Hulk. Uh, sorry, this guy's name is actually Hulk and this guy's name is Hulk too. Um, now, when one of these objects comes into scope, um, and they will always need to be on the topmost window of a thread. So typically these get added to your frame procedure, right. but you, you could as we have here, have a window open with it on as well. Um, when the object comes into scope, it sends out a UDB broadcast to a specific range of ports, which we'll get to. And it says, hi, I'm here. Um, is anyone out there? And on the other end, the guy will get that broadcast and send back and say, yeah, I'm here. And that's what happened with these two programs. That's why they just connected up together. Um, and they'll have a conversation. You can send from one, you can reply from the other, you can send, they're both clients, so either side can initiate. Now, there's not a lot that can go wrong, but there are a few things. Uh, the first is obviously firewalls. So when this program first starts, it will pull up a firewall notification, assuming you're on a desktop version of Windows. If you're on a server version of Windows, it'll get blocked without the firewall notification, unless you turn that on. Um, so that's obviously issue number one. Issue number two is that they connect over a set of ports and different programs or different um, groups of programs, for want of a better word, uh, can use different ports. In the network here, in the index, if we go to utility functions and we go to net options. There's two things that are in play here. So this is the datagram port number. So this is the number that it sets to start the range um, for UDP. And max instances sets how many net auto instances can be run on one machine. The default there is five. So this means if you've got a TS plus machine, for example, and you've got 10 programs running on it, they'll only the first five that run will talk to each other. And if one of those drops off, the others, the others won't notice. Um, as in the, the, the other five won't fill in the right. hole. Um, so typically five is enough for one machine until you start running any kind of server type situation where you have many instances of your program or programs running on that box and you need to wind this number up. Right, and I, I, that's not my case. My case is I have, I have the one polar and I have the one poly um, yeah. and they're running on a server and, and they talk most of the time, but sometimes it, they like lose track of each other, it seems. It, it can happen because UDP is a, an un, um, uh, in, in quotes, an unreliable protocol. It's allowed to drop packets. So it is possible that when the one starts up, it doesn't, um, its broadcast doesn't reach everyone. Good. If that makes any sense. It does. Um, so you should get a, a server's changed call whenever the list gets added to or removed from on both ends. So service changed is a good place to put debugging to say, okay, so-and-so arrived, so-and-so left, so-and-so arrived, so-and-so left and so on. Um, outside of that, not a whole lot you can be doing wrong. Um, well, like I said, it's, it's working most of the time, but sometimes it like mm, the the polar does it doesn't, stop doesn't working once response. it's been working, or is it just sometimes you start it doesn't notice? Um, it's the the troublesome behavior is it works for a while and then it misses loses interest uh, apparently um and you know i i've got the i've got the thing running on my local machine and it runs like a charm of course yeah um and so 
um, I, I have seen a couple of occasions where um, when I say, are you working, then there's no response. So one of the strategies I put in is to allow a, uh, some retries. So if I don't get a response on the first, are you there, then I circle around and, and try it again you know, in, you know, a minute later. And then um, hoping that that it will respond, and then if it doesn't, then I I have a little odd job connection, and so then I try and stop it and restart it. So trying to get to a self healing sort of environment. Sure, I guess um, your the first point of debugging would be to know does the message not get sent, or does the receiver not hear it. So are you failing to send or is he failing to receive? Because that will focus you into which end is actually not working. Cool. Um, and that's that's kind of gonna be really useful to know. The other is that of course, if any traffic comes in and the object is not on the topmost window of some thread, then those <laughs> events are gonna get thrown away. Um, right. And that's that's so a message box, for example, or anything of that nature. Sure. Say if you're sending an email that opens a window. If you're doing, you know, there's lots of things you might do that could open a window. You just got to be aware of that. Yep. Um, and then and obviously, I, you... and my my poly does have a a uh, launches a thread that has a timer on it that is waiting to do something every so often, um, while my Holy listener is running on the mainframe, so yes. there there could be some some contention or or focus yeah. difference going on too. And and you know you could put up a, a third program that just lets you see what the two of them are doing. So you know, or, or in your indeed on both ends, you can put a little bit more in the way of um, just dem. You know, put put some something up on the screen to say I sent this, I got this back, I sent this, I got this back, that kind of thing. <laughs> Indeed, and I I did in my polar I do have a log that that uh, indicates when the message gets sent. So yeah, um, the so just the, log the other end as well so that you can see if the message got received. Sure. Because that's the other issue, of course, is that <laughs> we can get bogged down in the comms, but it's actually oh no, the comms are working fine, and there's something wrong in the code. Is the is the other place to go looking? Uh, um, something wrong in the code? What? Yeah. I can't believe you suggest well, such a thing. Today, I, I was trying to debug something and there's a line, there's an error message that comes up in debug view and it says, the problem is over there. And I looked over there and the problem's not there. Oh. So yeah, I struggled and struggled and struggled and it just keeps telling me the problem's over there, problem's over there, problem's over there. And I'm going, no, it's not, that code's fine. Right up until the moment I realized what the problem over there was. And um, it computer was right all along. Um, so, but it, the code looked very good, right up to the point where it looked really bad. So Until it didn't. Mistake. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes it's actually, uh, if you put in enough logging to see that, oh no, the conversation's happening just fine. It's what happens after that that's the problem. Yep. That also just gets you much much closer. And I do have I do have debug view logging or running so that I do see when the message gets sent. I can see the the contents of the message going out um, and the response coming, um, the response handling and what's going on from on the poly side. So yes. I, have, I did put those things in play. Cool. So, all right. Thank you so much, Bruce. I appreciate it. Pleasure, Mark. Mel says oh. his customer is happy. Yeah. Ron so had a, uh, another I'm suggestion saying. too, as far as sending things around, messages around. Value Utilities has a simple Windows messaging feature, which uses mail slots. That is an alternative or another way of sending. It's another way of doing a chat. About, yeah. yeah. And Frank says, if we have a second, his Thema app is locking up. And it's locking up for me too, Frank, as it did in the webinar last week. I haven't figured out the answer to that yet. So something's broken when we um, try and edit the theme. So perhaps we'll talk about that tomorrow. If I figure out what on earth it's going on, it's a, it's a, it's a tricky little one. So you're not alone out there. Uh, excuse me, Bruce, uh, if there's no other question right now, I, I actually have uh, something that I experienced this morning that I 
like to bring bring to the uh, the group here to see if there's a solution. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's best to show uh, what occurs on my screen. Sure, uh, I can share. You'll need to unmute yourself. Okay, unmuted, okay. There we go. All right, um, let's see, screen. Okay, can you see that screen? We can. Okay, so what, um, um, so the app is running um, and uh, you can click the X up here in the right corner, but it doesn't actually close the app and that's the way I intended the design to be. So it's sitting down here in the tray. Uh, we're not seeing, we're not seeing that. We're not seeing the tray. So, so there's, uh, so it's not showing the whole window. So what happens is the application goes down to that little windows uh, taskbar that's on the bottom. So yeah. the app doesn't actually shut down um, unless you go over to the corner here where my, my pointer is where there is a close so I can close the window. So now it shut the application. It's closed. It's, Shut down. So now I'm um, sharing. Okay, I'm gonna. Oh, <laughs> you, you, okay. you were sharing the app instead of your screen. So I need to share your whole screen. Oh, I need to share my whole screen. Okay. Share screen. Uh, okay, here it is. Is that sharing the screen now? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you can see I have a, the taskbar on the lower bottom, the Windows taskbar. And yes. um, if we have uh, something that appears in the browser, I'm not sure if that's causing the issue. I'm, I'm not thinking of that, but you can see that the application is sitting in the taskbar and I can click on the right, uh, the X up here in the corner and it closes the application just from the desktop. So it's still running. Um, and I wanted that for convenience so that if you want to open it up, and you wanted to place something uh, in your list, um, you could do that. However, what I noticed is when I do uh, close my window, and let's say I open um, a um, browser, um, it seems to be taking away, you can see I'm typed a letter T in, but it's going back in the application, I believe, because that's the only other thing that's running, uh, takes um, over the, the cursor. <laughs> If that makes sense. Sure. If your if your application um, takes the focus, yes, um, focus. then it will take it, the focus. Yeah. Is it on a timer or something? Is the the mainframe on? Is there a timer running there? That's um, in focus. No, I don't have a timer. It just would be the application running. I, I, I've not put any timer in. If there is one, it's based on whatever the compiler is generating to. Say I'll go look at my application, come back. So, but I happen to notice that when I was trying to drag and yeah, drop. Yeah. So what what you'd want to do is you'd want to start closing like the in this app now. It's got a bunch of windows open, so you'd start by having all the windows closed before you minimized your app. Uh, oh well, this is all just one window. It's one frame. Well, close it. Okay. So I can, so, okay, that closes the frame. I can close the app itself. So I close no, the app. No, 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 don't close the app. Close okay. that window in your app. Okay. Or is that the only window in your app? Oh, that's the only that's window. The only it's window. a single windowed app. That's now. the main app. Okay. So what you want to do then is um, experiment. You're going to have to figure out what in here is grabbing the focus. Okay. And I can tell you how to do that. Oh yeah, use, sweet. Yeah, use ultimate debug and put um, ud.debug event in those in the windows that are open in their um, accept loop, or actually it would be the take event, right? Is this ABC? Yes, it's ABC. Yeah, yeah. So, so you only so, have like, I don't know how many you have open, but just put a ud.debug event in parentheses and you can put the name it in there if you want. Okay. What, the procedure is, although okay. we'll show you a procedure it's coming from anyway, so you don't necessarily have to do that. But anyway, just add those in. Looks like there might only be like five or six of them or whatever. And then yeah, when you is... type into um, the browser, 
you should be able to see the events that are being triggered and in what window they're being triggered. And then okay. you can figure out what to do with them. Okay. It looks like you're getting a gain focus. Well, not, yeah, I mean, gain focus or something. Probably. Yeah, prop active, probably something like that. Um, yeah, yeah, whatever it is. But, but yeah, if you track the events, you might be able to see what's going on. Okay, yeah. I can do that. Um, that's that. That will get me going today on that. Uh, the other question is, and it's maybe something you want me to look at tomorrow, uh, Bruce. But what I did was, um, I do have um, the um, the license feature built in. And uh, currently, the license uh, is set to um, expire in 14 days. So being that today is uh, the 17th, it's still eligible to be, you know, for the warning message not to appear. Um, however, if I go to um, the, uh, the website for and change the, uh, the date for the expiration, um, let me, I'm just doing this on another another screen. I go to my my customers, and I go to uh, the company, and I change the license, which is the current license, which says here expiry date on the 17th. I'm going to change that to the 10th. So I've just changed that, and I'm going to save that. So I'm going to come back into the application. And it's uh, not aware of it yet, but um, if I was to get the license, um, what I'm getting is I'm getting a GPF. No, uh, that's not a GPF. Or MDI uh, error. Does, yeah, does yeah stop, 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 stop. It's what? telling you what's wrong. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll go back. Because it does occur now uh, because it's it's related to the the notification that the application expires. Let's see if it's, it's got, it still has the 17th. So if I get the license, it should get the current one. Okay, it got it successfully. Now I've, it's not done it yet. So if I okay, and then I exit, I come back in again, it's going to detect that the date has changed. It's, now it's not doing it. Well, did it get the new license? Yeah, it hasn't gotten. Um, so you may not have updated the right one. You want to check your customer there? Which customer okay. you updated? Let me check the customer again, customer license. Oh, yeah, it says expiry. Um, okay, today's the third, so I'll go to that record and I'll change the expiry date to uh, the 10th. Okay, I'll go and look at that record. Okay, stop there, stop there, stop there, stop there. Oh, there it Don't is. Okay, so, oh, yeah, Don't so the application. Buttons. Okay, God, sorry. Okay, so this is telling you that you're unable to open an MDI window. Right. Because no application is active. In other words, you don't have any frame procedures, which is fine. But one okay. of the windows in your program is marked as comma MDI child or comma MDI. And that's the window that's trying to be opened now. Okay, and that is the, the warning window. The little, there's a small window that appears that warns the customer that the license <clears throat> is expiring soon. Yep. If you looked in Ultimate Debug now, it should show you what procedure it tried to open. If you're if you're running it, I don't know if you're running it, but uh, no, I'm not running it. Um, I could do that. And if you had debugging yep. turned on and using the debug DLL, I'm guessing you'll see stuff in that call stack as well. Hmm. Yeah, it could have, that could point to it as well. Yeah. Is that uh, something easy to to add right now? Yeah. So, so um, go, to, go to your, go go to your make sure Clarence closed and then okay. go to your Claren folder. Make sure Clarence closed and then go to Claren folder. Okay. The actual good. IDE folder. Do you, do you have to make sure Clarence closed? Yeah, because we're going to copy the DLL. Can. Yeah, but I don't think that's this the Clarence folder here. Uh, yeah, go to bin. Okay. 
You do, John, because it actually uses this DLL when the ID is open. So you can't copy it. Now go into debug. Okay. I'm not convinced, but okay. Copy that DLL. Go up one folder. Okay. And paste. And replace. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Then let's open no. the ID. What? Break it John. again. Yeah. No, I just, I'm just. So open times again, not necessarily. Yeah. yeah, I just want to make sure it's compiled in debug mode. <laughs> open your app. Okay. Now uh, compile. N no. No. Um, uh, build. Uh, Menu. Okay, build. Set configuration. Uh, set configuration, okay. Debug. Debug, okay. Okay, <clears throat> now compile and run. Okay. Um, is it okay if I use the lightning? I can't see sure. your buttons, but I mean, you can, whatever yeah. it takes to compile and run. Okay. So Bruce, I I, uh, I watched this this game show, and they have like four people, and they have to guess things, and it goes from one person to the next to the next. And if it's the one person's turn, and the next person starts to talk, then it's an out of turn penalty of five seconds. So I feel that I have an out of turn penalty of five seconds right now. You you earned one, or are you giving one out? No, 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 because you were speaking and I kind of jumped in and then I, I feel like I should have a penalty for that. I should have a, <laughs> a five-second penalty. You lose your star, right? Hey? Yeah, I lose my Clarion Life star, one of my Clarion Life stars. I don't even have any Clarion Life stars. I give them out, but I don't I don't receive any because that, that, be, that would be wrong. You should open up Ultimate Debug View too while you're at it. Okay, Ultimate. Uh, if you I have, have Ultimate debug. debug in your app, um, which you yeah, should. I think I do. Yeah. Okay, get the Debug Viewer running while this is building. I know I have Debug Plus Plus. Um, that's not the same thing, right? That's that's not for you. You don't want that. You want that. Ultimate I don't debug. want. Okay. The ultimate debug viewer. You could actually use either viewer, but the ultimate debug just has a night. It formats it easier, so it's easier to see what's going on. Okay. Do you want to show me how to start that? Or? No, before we viewer? get there, just go, go, to your, uh, go to there. Okay. John, I'll show you in a minute. Yeah, I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so we get the um, expire. That's good. We get that. That's good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, go to, go to your um, licensing and get the license again. Let's see if we can make it okay. give the same error. So we're at the 10th, so it was... Mm. Okay, change the, change the one on the... Um, change it on the web. Yeah, okay. just make it the ninth. Okay. I mean, you want that error again, right? Yes. Okay. We can close this and we'll start the uh, app. It's a good thing you like typing your password. I know. I, I just, <laughs> I haven't done the testing on the not typing it yet. Well, now that I've added all the, oh, there it is. There okay. Go. Okay. 
And it actually doesn't show the stack frame. So that's it interesting. Tell you anything. <laughs> Oh, wow. So go ahead and, and um, run the uh, ultimate debug here. So close this. Uh, yep. Now, where would the ultimate debug viewer? That's a good question. It should be in your Clarion folder under accessories and then I'm not sure where I put it. Um, then probably. Yeah, bin. bin or examples. Look at, let's just try bin. Now. Is it starts with a U? Ultimate. Ultimate CDN, what's that? Don't know. No, oh. that's not it. Yeah, no, it's not there. Try um, uh, examples. Okay. Nope. Well, I would have thought that's where it was. Uh, you're you can run, you can run regular debug if you want. Yeah, it's installed, right? Let's, yeah, go, to your global ex pretty sure let's go to your global extension, see if you've got ultimate debug view in your program. Okay. Mm, I don't think so then. I think um, I have uh, GPF reporter, but no, not not ultimate debug. Well, yeah, it's going to be hard to find then. <laughs> That's not installed. So, should I install it? Yeah, it, I mean, you're making me sad right now that you don't have I'm it sorry. installed. Oh, no, sorry. You, you should do that. <laughs> you should do that. Um, install Ultimate Debug, add it to your application, recompile, and we'll see what Grant has to say while you're doing that. How's that sound? So, so, what, so I it just insert it from here. Or do you, you have it? Is it installed, but not? Here, yeah. there it is. Oh, you do have it. Okay, all right, good enough. Okay. Wait, wait, what's that? That's not it. Oh, that's you must not... have it installed. No, no, no. You don't want that. Delete that. Are you sure it's not in there? Because it. Yeah, go keep going all the way down. Keep going. Ultimate right there. Yeah. You got yeah. it. It's already installed. It's ready. It's rolling. Okay. Okay. Now let me see if I can find you the application. Ultimate debug, ultimate debug view. Um, it's, it should be in your menu, in your Windows menu. Uh -huh. Let's see. Just type ult, uh, look for uh, ultimate debug view.exe. There it is. Yeah. Okay. Um. You can, it, it's not, there you go. Okay. That looks good. Now, uh, move your mouse down just a little bit, just a little tiny, tiny bit. Move it down. Down to up, 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 up just a bit. Up, hold it, just a tiny, tiny, right down. I know this is hard, sorry. Up, just very small amount, right there. Yeah. Click your mouse and pull down. Okay. Okay. Keep going. Move the all thing right. all the way down. Keep going. Okay, right there. That looks good. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay. okay. Oh, no worries. You're doing all right. All right. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and run your program again. Okay. And you've got it in the program, right? We just, we just compiled it in. Right, right. Um, let's. Uh... Okay, so, so you were saying this... open and close stuff. Yeah, you're now we're seeing stuff from your application. So that's good. okay, cool. Thank you. Teaching me how to use this to uh, I need to learn that. You're going to need to change the license to another date. Okay. Um... Changing license now uh, to um, make it the eight. Save. Looks <clears throat> like so it it's uh, unhappy here. We'll go to task manager, not responding. So we'll uh, end the task and. Uh, Start it again. Mm. 
Okay. Hmm. Change the date again. Change the date again. Okay, good licenses. Um, change it to uh, seven. No, why seven? Uh, oh, seven, seven will be okay. Yeah, seven will be okay. Yeah, it should be good, right? Okay. Hmm. Never a good sign when your program goes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I changed the date and that's typically what it would have popped up again. Go look at to... the uh, debug view. Pull it in. Let's look at that window. Okay. Um, this guy, there it is. All right, let's go into uh, the message procedure. Yeah, I was going into the message routine for a minute. Uh, Which version of Clarion are you? What are you compiling in? Uh, Clarion eleven point one. Don't do that. Unless no. you want this kind of behavior, don't do that. Go, you should, you should to... compile it in eleven. Yeah, I do have an 11 version that I do backward compile, and there is an error in it that I just never brought to the attention of the webinar. Go to the oh, yeah. DS message procedure. 11.1, .1, especially with the Kojak stuff. Yeah. It's, it's not good. You'll, you'll get freezes, disappearing windows, all sorts of weird stuff. You should probably compile this in 11.0. Okay. Any version, I think, will do. Do you want me to, well, know, that go, to go to properties? Go to properties. Click on the ellipsis button next to the word window. Okay. Okay. Well, at least this, uh, just scroll to the right bottom there. Okay. So th this window isn't the one that's MDI child. Okay. So yeah, you'll have to do what John said. Okay. What did I say? <laughs> oh, compile it in 11. Compile yeah. it in 11. Peter, once you you'll do expand on the happier. comment, John. Okay. Yeah, I can I, I can do that too. Um, but there is a, it's called too many five. Actually, the error that comes up is I can compile the same application 11.0 and it says too many files. And it, and that's all the error messages uh, in the bottom. And I can kind of set that up and maybe bring that to the next webinar. You, uh, you can do I populate can modules. That. Yeah. Yeah. That's an easy, that's just a switch. That's, Is it, go okay. ahead and switch it. Go ahead and, yeah, we'll do. I mean, we got a little bit of time, right? Where are we at? Just nine o'clock. Okay. So um, let's. Um, it would take me, I've got to go to a VM to do it real quick. Uh, it's not in. Uh, it's on a VMware. Okay. John, Peter wants you to expand mm -hmm. on that comment about the lockups in 11.1. Um, especially using Kojak uh, wrappers, and Andy's aware of it as well. There's some kind of <laughs> odd loop that's that happens, but um, <clears throat> it, it's just, what can I say? It just locks up in 11.1. Because uh, you know we have several things, right? We have Classify It, which is available at uh, www.onosoft.com for just twenty-five dollars for a limited time. And uh, I compile that in eleven point one, and it will freeze up. And I compile it in eleven point zero, and it works great. So there is definitely a problem somewhere in there. But my solution to those kinds of things is just to compile it in eleven point zero and not worry about the issue. And hopefully, it'll get resolved at some point. So anyway. I would not recommend 
distributing anything in 11.1 personally. I don't know how you feel about it, Bruce, but that's where I am. Well, <laughs> I'm not doing anything I've not had a problem, but I'm not using the Kojak controls. So I don't know if it's an right. OLE thing. Yeah, I use them in, in most everything. So that's yeah. it could be that, you know, some something going on, something changed between 11 and 11.1. Yeah, 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 and these aren't the, the way Andy has not given, uh, I'm one of his beta guys, so he has not placed the, the latest one that he has working on his clients. Um, as far as the templates, I have like the F version, but and it's definitely has some glitch, some some funnies as you call them. So, but yeah. that I'll need to wait a, a few weeks for. I just I'm not seeing any advantage of compiling 11.1. It doesn't. I'm not sure that it gains me anything. Hmm. You know, between the runtimes, is there any real? I mean, Bruce, is there a difference where I? I'd uh, like to be compiling in 11.1 only because it's the most recent thing, but what is, what's the gain? I, did, I don't see a gain. Uh, I'm only using it because time. of any screen. So uh, right. compatibility and testing there and so on. Right. Yeah. I guess if you need to use any screen, that's where you got to be. Um, but I don't got to be there. So. Yeah. And this, this particular app, because of the controls, would not be any screen, but the, the previous version without the controls was a direction I was going to go in, but uh, but now I'm I'm moving in the direction of NetTalk um, apps, so uh, that'll probably alleviate that uh, need for the any screen. Do we want to answer Grant's question while we're yes, yeah. please waiting here, for Mark? Hey, Grant. Talk to us. Good evening, gentlemen. How's it going? Yeah, good, thank you. Computer. Unfortunately, I've been around lately. I've been very busy, and uh, but I've had a whole lot of questions. I've been piling up waiting to talk to you guys about this. The, the problem I've been getting lately is um, my app, uh, I've written a really snappy app, and it runs for lots of different companies, but there's some core tables that are shared between all the companies. So in my, SQL, my Microsoft SQL Server, I have one database for each company, so I can separate the data um, in case I have to move companies off onto different SQL servers later. <coughs> Excuse me. But I have one database that's common to all, all the companies, which has got some generic information in it, like postcodes and all that kind of stuff. But there's quite a few tables in there. And what I'm finding is when, um, as soon as I have uh, two connection strings and I have a table that's joined with another table that's in another database. The system runs incredibly slow and I have posted this on Clarion Hub and, and uh, the few people have been kind enough to answer me, but I'm, uh, my level of knowledge is obviously not enough to get me over the line to be able to fix this problem. But once, so I, when I move the tables back into the same database, everything works at perfect speed again. And the difference, for instance, Bruce is with, um, in the same table, I'll have a browse box fill in half a second. And today I tried it and it took three and a half minutes to have yeah. the same browse filled when I moved one small table, just a tiny table with three entries in it yeah. out into another database. So yeah. people are saying I need to use a view. Uh, I just, don't know where to start. If if they can point me in the direction of some documentation or something that could help me, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Okay. So when you're doing, let's cover a couple of bases. When you're doing a cross database join, um, the, the the specific SQL statement that goes to the server is going to matter, and um, obviously you 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 may have the two databases in the same server, but there's nothing in your there's nothing current that says they have to be in the same server. So once you've got two different databases, you've got, as as it understands it, two completely distinct things. And so it doesn't construct SQL statements that join tables across two databases. So that's the first thing. Okay. So yes, it, it'll go slow because it's got to do, um, it's got to basically bring both tables to the client completely and then apply everything there, apply the join there. So yeah, it's going to go wicked slow. Um, I would, debate how much I would want tables that I'm going to join against to be in different databases because 
you're going to make life harder, not easier. But if you really wanted it to be in different databases, then you would make a um, then you would make a, a, a view on the server side, um, essentially inside. Someone's in the chat said, and Mary, is this you actually talking here? Maybe yeah, Mary actually it is could, me. There we go. Well, you, you Hello, go ahead and, and tell. Hello. I said I would consider Hi. putting a um, synonym into the, the non-shared database, right? The, the ones that you have multiple databases of for your clients pointing towards the shared database for each table that you want to access because then you can just let SQL Server itself handle the connections and it's quite fast. And then you would have the same connection string. That's the important point. Right. You don't have to switch the connection string in Clary and then you would just always be pointing towards your client database. Um, and can you just elaborate on that a little bit, Mary? Um, obviously, not, <laughs> I'm not so the off fair how to do that can you just give me a clue as to where i go next thank you sure yeah uh, i mean a synonym is just uh an object in um sql server that points to a different object so it's like an alias um the syntax okay. is available kind of anywhere if you google it it's, it's uh, trying to see if i have an example i mean it's just like create synonym and then you give it a name and I just name it the same thing as the 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 table that I'm pointing towards. So let's say you have a, a shared um, vendor list, right? You have vendors for multiple people or whatever. You have a shared vendor list. Vendors in your um, in your shared database. I would create synonym um, called vendor for, and then you do the fully qualified um, reference. So like the shared database dot dbo dot vendor and that's it it's super simple it's like a one line of code and then and you just use it SQL like any code. other table yeah. yeah so that's SQL code that you're declaring in your in your sql database so in, right. at the moment what you've done grant is you've said oh i'm going to make this separate at the program level the program yeah. knows they're in two different databases but actually what you really should do is do that at the database level so your program thinks it's all in one database. Okay. And the fact so that, that's that down at the yes. database, you've you've synonymed it away to another one is, is the key. So, but that's that's at the database okay. layer, not at the Clarion layer. Clarion thinks all the tables are in the same database. Okay. All right. I'll have a look at that. So I'll find the syntax of that then and see if I can set it up. Thank you, Mary. Thanks so much. Sure. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank, thanks, Bruce. Thank you, John. I did nothing, Grant. But um, <laughs> I uh, did less than that. <laughs> John, John didn't even do nothing. Uh, Mark, is, are you ready? Uh, yeah, it's uh, not quite yet. I, the, the desktop is starting to appear, but everything seems to run slower with Zoom. But uh, yeah, I'm almost there. If we have time. My VM is at the point where it's giving me the date and the time, but double clicking, it's not opening up the, the pin yet. So that's where I'm at. So okay. apologize. So Bruce, I ordered my third new camera for CIDC yesterday. Hmm. That's And that's it. I only, I only need three, and this is the third. Now, How many all tripods the do you match. need? How many tripods do I need? Um, well, four. Because you're not bringing any tripods, are you? Well, I can. I mean, I have all the tripods as well, but then I, I'm, I'm going to have to be um, keeping an eye on the weight that I don't yes. go over because I don't want to go over. And each of those tripods is going to weigh a couple pounds. So that's probably two, four, six. That's probably eight pounds right there, maybe 10, eight to 10 pounds there. The amplifier or the, the audio board is um, nine pounds. But everything else is around a pound to two pounds. 
And you saw the diagram, right? You can add all that up. I, I'm worried. I mean, it, it could work. I'm only worried about, um, are you flying straight into Cape Town? That's, that's all right. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, yeah. I've out. seen some of the, the American airports luggage handling lately. It's a bit scary. <laughs> that is. This should be pretty simple. We go there, check in. They put it on the plane, one plane, then we take it off. Yeah. No transfers. That'll probably help. But yeah, probably I mean, help. if you have tripods there, that would that would save. I you think we've packing. got at least two. I'll hunt around and see what we've got. Okay. Yeah, so I can bring some if needed. I really, really, really want to travel with just one suitcase, even though they, they give you two. two free, yeah. Peter says they're recommending that you ship luggage and excess equipment separately, certainly in the in Europe and the UK, especially the UK. Um, yeah, there's definitely issues there. I think a little bit less, it, it, it so depends on the airport. Um, you're coming out of JFK, aren't you? Uh, no, it's Newark. Newark, even Newark better. Airport. Yeah. Um, and the plane comes direct to Cape Town, so there's no problem this end. It's, it's a direct flight. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. I can't think there would be a problem unless it did not get on the plane for some reason. <laughs> Peter says, "New Jersey? Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. It's they. They. They have direct I mean, flights only yeah. from Newark Airport Newark. to Cape Town. That's." That's the only place I know of that they do. <laughs> yes, I saw Goodfellas. It was a while ago, though. We did one of our 2006 um, world tour events at Newark Airport. Oh, cool. There's a, there's a hotel um, that you get to with a little train um, from the airport itself. No, I lie. You couldn't get to the hotel with the train. So if you're at the airport, there's a little air train that takes you to uh, the station. And from that station, you go straight to Penn, um, Penn Street in New York. So that's how we got into New York. But if you want to get to the, to the hotel, it's hilarious. The hotel is like, the airport is like here and the hotel is like here. And then there's this freeway that runs between the two. So to get from the 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 airport, so you get you get the air train to this little depot, the hotels depot, and you get off there, and they have shuttles that take you to the actual hotels. But it's like it's maybe a hundred yards, maybe from from where you get on the shuttle to where you get off, maybe as the crow flies. But because there's this freeway, you have to get on the freeway, go all the way up to the next exit get off there, come all the way back down, you go past the hotel again, then you get off the next exit, and then you go up. So you do like up and down, up and down, up and down this little 100 yard stretch. Um, it takes about oh, 10 minutes or so to to travel just there, because you just keep <laughs> driving up and down this freeway. And every five minutes you drive past the hotel, not every five minutes, every two minutes, you drive past the hotel that you're eventually going to end up at. And it's like, hang on, well, uh, 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 <laughs> And we did it a few times because um, to get, you can't walk. The, the station, the air train station is right next to the hotel. The air train literally comes past the hotel window. Right? I mean, you, you know, you could throw a stone out and hit it. it it's up at, at the level. And the station that goes to Penn Street is literally at the end of this little road. But you can't walk down the road to the station. There's a big fence across it. Oh. You have to get the, the shuttle all the way back to the airport and then catch the train one more stop back past and you wave past your hotel room as you go i mean it's just the whole i mean just yeah if they if they open up that fence you could take the air train to the station and walk to the hotel it would take i mean it's not 50 yards from the from the station would be perfect but um americans they don't want you to it's not a very free country i noticed that there's lots of there's lots of non-freedoms they just they don't like you to walk you know can't Especially can across the, the freeway, they're not, they're not keen on. No, that. no. Well, the freeway is the other side. This would be from the station to the hotel. Would be it's on a road that doesn't go anywhere. It's a cul-de-sac. Just oh, goes to the well, station. Let you go there. So there's no, no traffic, but um, there's, they went there. There's a fence in the gate. 
I am uh, compiling an 11.0 now, so if you want, we can come back to me or can share yeah, screen. Yeah, sure. you can yeah, share your screen. screen. Yeah. Sure. Okay, share my screen now. Um, okay, you see that 11.0 now. Okay, I think that we will all be much happier. Okay, good. I, that's all I want to say. Happiness. <laughs> <laughs> I, just want, I just want to get this done. All right. So, Bruce, we got we got ten viewers on YouTube and only three likes. We need to bring the drama. It looks like. <laughs> yes, it's the drama. I mean, I thought we brought a little bit of drama with the X Files thing, but maybe, uh, maybe not enough. Apparently, not enough, John. Apparently, not <laughs> not nearly dramatic enough. And I certainly had a little bit of drama with the eleven point yes. one thing there, yeah, right? Because I, yeah, you know, it's not like I, mean, I don't have an opinion on that. Very controversial. It is <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so I don't know. And, and I don't actually, know what else to do. yeah. And we that, picked up and a couple more likes there. There you go. Good, good. Just, just talking about the drama. Just so Mark like suffer. That. It's Mark suffering, so that that should increase the likes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If suffering brings brings the likes. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. It's been a long project, but it's almost there. It's really coming so close with uh, getting the licensing and things working. It's like really the the, the end. Everything else is, uh, there's a couple of glitches, but we'll wait a couple of weeks, I'll get the latest uh, templates and um, I'll be ready to, to give my webinar and release. Cool. Yeah, awesome. I'm excited. And then my, my sons can stop hearing me whining so much. And my granddaughter too. And my granddaughter goes, she goes, Grandpa, did Andy, is Andy on yet? Oh, there you go. There's too many files. <laughs> cool. Okay, that, Bruce, please? let's let's fix this one. You know how to fix so it. So go to application. Okay. Go to actually before you do that, before you do that, on the right where it says tree mode, just change that to module for me. Um tree okay. mode. Module. Okay. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. Go to application. Okay. Repopulate uh repopulate modules right here yes yeah okay two change two? it to two yeah okay and say okay okay and then uh, go to application menu application and delete empty modules delete empty modules <clears throat> there you go and compile Too many files. You don't yeah. even have that many. It doesn't seem like it, does it? <laughs> I've, I've got no, 130 really some or so in one of them. Yeah, the yeah, it's no. quite small. Looks like you got maybe 60. Oh, and also I did uh, I did set up my, my hotel reservations, but I have to call them. I don't know if I got a better rate than originally, but uh, maybe that's already been turned off, Bruce. Uh, hotel where the conference if you, if you if you want to book the hotel and you haven't already done so you need to phone them before friday yeah i booked it on my own about a month or so ago but uh i didn't ask him about um special conference rates so well if you phone them and you tell them you're booking okay. yeah they'll put you on the conference right okay cool but you need to do that before friday yeah i'll do that i'll do that today uh, what it's fancy. too late today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'll oh, all be yeah. asleep by now. Tomorrow. So you need to do it first Tomorrow. thing in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Wait, what? They're asleep by what? Well, the, the reservations group, the, the people who do the conferencing and stuff, mm -hmm. they work office hours. And it's half past six now. Oh, okay. Yeah, just... Oh, there you go. You got errors. Click on the arrow. Unknown procedure label. Oh, this ABC is probably moved or something. Chrome Explorer login. I feel like you haven't uh, opened the same app here. Yeah, just copy. Oh, uh, no, go to So go to that procedure. Okay. Chrome Explorer login. Yeah. Um, Chrome you need to, yeah, so, where, so wherever that procedure was, you can either make that, you can declare that globally if you want, or you can, okay. or you can assign it to the two procedures that use it. 
Yeah. I'll just leave, I'll just do the global. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. it's it's you know it's a cheap and nasty approach, but yeah. Cheap and nasty. That's what Mike Hansen does all the time. <laughs> okay. All yeah. right. I don't know. I try to assign them myself. But I can't say one way is better than the other. I don't know. Thank you both for, mm -hmm. for helping me here. That's why we showed up today, right, Bruce? Excellent. Yes. I, I <laughs> we showed that's, up just to help why. people. Yeah, yeah, maybe. And then I still need to try, I'll, I'll work on trying to figure out that. Um, um, where it's taking the focus. Oh, now we got too many, too many files, files again. Go to go to your solution pad. I want to see how many That's files you got. Uh, solution pad. Right hand side, the bottom. But you need okay. to make it bigger. Oh yeah. It's it's squashed down. You just need to make your pad bigger. Screw like the divider between no. So the solution pad. There, make it bigger. Scroll it up. There we go. Oh yeah. Scroll all yeah. the way up. Okay, let's look at uh, solution items. Okay, let's look at cash. And scroll down. I think there's so many files. Scrolling. Keep scrolling. What are all those? Oh, there's all the... Oh. stuff, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, because you've got all of this third-party stuff in there. That's what Andy was talking about because he's redone this stuff because it's a, it's pretty. He was get running into this as well, the too many files thing, right? Yes. Remember that Mark? He was talking about it during his webinar. Yeah. And that that he's redone a lot of it so that it's. Um, all right. Well, we can bring your number many, down a little bit. Go to application, repopulate modules. Probably it. Choose five. Let's see if we can bring the number down. So there's a good reason to use uh, 11.1, John. It allows more files. Yeah, it did. It does accept all. So do I do anything else? <laughs> Compile. Yeah. yeah. Uh, application, delete empty modules. Thank and you. compile. Yeah. Yeah, and look, okay, so one, I, I, I'm on the, the most current. It does resolve some other issues that I found were important to getting my product out there that were Clarion compiler based but um, mm -hmm. yeah i did know of the command bars were where andy was having the issues but this particular message that's appearing seems to be outside the scope of that issue but it would be nice that it would compile on under 11.0 yeah we'll see that Now the benefit of doing this where you're putting more procedures into modules, it's going to compile faster. Looks like we have a compile. There you go. See Whoa. how much quicker it compiled. Okay, should we do the license? Uh... Yeah, you might need reading. to change your date to force that. Yeah, let's check the license. Um, uh, yeah, it's, this one thinks it's the 17th, so. Um, okay, you get it from I'll the web. In, I'll get it from the web. Let's do a uh, license. It still has it. Didn't get. Maybe I should go up to the web and check again. Um, this is a different serial number, so it's, this is a different customer. Ah, uh, that's. Ah, uh, well, it's it's still my here. Um, no, I'm looking at the serial number. Yeah, you're right. It's a different um, license. Um, I can go to. Um, so you change the one with that serial number. Okay, let's do that. I'm getting my, uh... 
Oh, now we can see the second online registration. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm showing that now. Okay. So if we go to uh, the customers, it's just the one, but I do have two licenses, I guess, right? I guess. Yeah. Many licenses. All right, yeah. so it's the XDF one that you want to change. Okay. So XDF is, uh, says AP. Change that. We'll change it to the 10th acceptable. Sure. Um, licenses. Hopefully, you were running deep ultimate debug view along all this time. Right? Oh, well, we're not. This is on the virtual machine, so I didn't turn that on. Ah, uh, it's not responding. Maybe we should be running Ultimate Debugger to see what it's doing. You should always be running Ultimate Debug View. It should right. always be running. All right, we're gonna, maybe there's still some glitch in here. Uh, Are you using the same app file? Uh, yes, I copied the same app file into my C11.0. Um, but Bruce, we switched over to a different Clarion so that the um, runtime is probably not the debug runtime. Yeah, it should just use versions. This this different virtual machines is just going to cause copy apps around. You're going to get all kinds of problems. But so I am Mark doesn't want to do it right. So what can no, we? I do, do want to do it right, Bruce. Absolutely. What, what did you want? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted you to have your Clarion version set up so you can just oscillate between the two of them using that, the versioning system. I will do that. That I am set because I wasn't going back and forth, but I know that I should watch and, and do that. I saw that webinar that you did. So hmm. you saw well, it and you ignored it. Huh? Just did nothing. There's the controversy, John. Yeah. There's. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Well, that should generate some likes, I'm sure. There, there you go. <laughs> Bring um, the drama, Bruce. Bring it. So, so it's ultimate debug in the app. So then run ultimate debug view. Let's see. So ultimate, uh, here's ultimate debug. So Okay. So run ultimate debug view. Um, and then I would get that from. Press the menu. start button, type ultimate. Yeah. There we go. Cool. There you are. All right. Just. I think I put it in the Clarion menu too. And it's then, actually down there on this taskbar. It's pinned on the taskbar. Uh, I was I was it. Oh yeah, that's what I usually do too. I pin it. So uh, go ahead and uh, run the application again. Yeah. We can don't go need through, to We don't need to compile. So we'll just go to, um, I have it here. So this runs it from 11.0. It's a good thing you haven't Remembered your password, huh? <laughs> I know. Get to oh, we're, getting, we're getting the message. More drama, Bruce. Come on, keep it going. Keep it going. Change well, the license. Change the license in the web. Change the license on the web. Okay. Okay, I got to. I'll change it from my desktop here and have it on there. Browse. Um, Customers, change, licenses. It's this one here. We changed it to the 10th, so we'll just change it to the, the ninth. Oh, no. no that's sorry. backwards. That's, that's backwards. backwards. Oh, DD month, month here. Okay. It's a good thing you haven't sticked on remember login. Okay, we did. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay. Okay, we can get the uh, license.
general. So now we do have, uh, well, 838389, okay. Successful. Yeah, you're not getting your MDI error now, but at least now if you do get the error, you'll be able to look in debug view and see where it's from. Right, but it is it is still hanging. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got something to work to do there as well. Sure. Look at the debug and see what it see where it stopped. Okay, debug view. There, it's there. Debug just view. have a look. Just open it. Yeah. It's there at the bottom. It's there at the bottom. Oh, the, the bottom. Okay. It's there at the bottom. It's a little uh, magnifying glass. There magnifying glass. Okay. DS yeah, message in the again. DS message. So it may be that you've got a search turned on because we're now compiling in debug mode. Mm. And if you if you call a message function inside the message function, you get this this effect. No. Um, now that can happen if you've got an assert turned on and that assert kicks in while it's showing the message. So what you can do to test the theory is you can just go to your global extensions. That's what we do. <clears throat> okay, where would you like me to go? Global extensions. Okay. Get a message box and just disable. There right here. Click this. Yep. Click disable. Okay. So okay. Okay. File and run. You can close that cache 008.clw tab at the top too, as soon as it gives you oh. the opportunity to do it. Otherwise, it'll just keep opening for no real reason. Okay. It's busy. Oh, I can smell the dinner. I am going down to um, some TSA office to get my TSA pre-check today. Mm. Mm. So cool. I'm going to skip the lines and keep my shoes on <laughs> when I go but travel. Does, doesn't that make the plane quite dangerous? <laughs> oh, absolutely. But I don't, I I'm mean, not a dangerous person, so I'm cool. Oh, uh, um, okay. Okay. So it's uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> only, only the safe people are allowed to do TSA pre checks. Yes. Yes. I'm, okay. I'm quite excited about the whole thing. Because they used to just kind of hand out pre-checks just randomly to you, and they kind of stopped doing that. But it's always a better thing. I have kind of a coming back. I have to. I fly into Newark, and we land at like five thirty in the morning, and then my connection leaves at seven twenty, and I don't want to. I have to get to customs, and then I got to yeah. get my bag, and then I got to recheck my bag, security. and then I got to get security, yeah. and I want to have TSA so I can get through security and like you know, five or 10 minutes instead of yeah. half hour. Well, you won't have any problems this end because we don't do that kind of nonsense. Yeah, click on one of those uh, errors there. Take care of these. Oh, these look... Yeah, it's just tank card. Yeah. Um, just click, just, com just comment that out. We're in the CLW. It's fine, comment it. Okay, okay, click the next error. Same thing. Yeah, it's okay. Same That's line, same, same line. Click, click the second last one. Oh, second last, okay. Comment out um, that line. Okay. Now click on the- Save it at the top. Yeah, you can save these two. You don't really actually have to, but you can save them. You kind of save now, it yourself. But... Just to the okay. right, there's a there's a square with a green, lots of green dots in it, little downward facing arrows. 
keep going right, keep going right. There we go. Uh, click that. What that's doing is building it without regenerating the okay. procedure because it, he's using the CLW and, and it's as soon as it regens the procedures, that's going to go away. You get the error again. Yeah. You could probably compile and release now, uh, now hey, John. Oh, uh, sure. That would make the asserts go away, which would solve the problem as well. Well, I guess okay. we'll see what happens here, though. I mean, this, okay. this will show whether that's the problem, right? Should we run this then? Yes, we should run it. Okay. Huh. It didn't keep the remember. Hmm. You didn't click it right. There you go. Okay, expiring. Expiring. Okay. Did change we want the me date. to change the date on license? The day before my birthday. Yeah, yeah. Now the messages came up. Ah. It's working. Mm -hmm. You've got license checking in your message function. Huh, do I? Yeah. Go to your message function. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. Good call, Bruce. License. Oh, I didn't need to open it again. Sorry. Yeah, you did. You need to open Claren. Yeah, I already had it over here. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. okay. Then go to um, go to the app. Go to the global extensions. Turn message box back on. Okay. Uh, message box. Okay. Enable. Okay. And then go to the DS message procedure. Okay. Go to extensions. Okay. Right, second, click on that second one there. Okay, disable screen security here. Okay. It's a message box, you can't have screen security. It's okay. Yeah, that's that's why it was it was hanging wow. there. Um, also do it for the, should you do it for DS stop and DS halt too, do you think? They should root through here, but go ahead and those are source procedures, not Windows. Yeah, they won't be there. Okay. They root through right, here. That's enough. fine. There. Yeah. Okay. Now go back into DS message, by the way. Let's see what else okay. is in there. Because extensions. Okay. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Leave it like that. Okay. Leave it like that. So, so maybe it wasn't an eleven point one issue, but I would still stay away from eleven point one. Wow. The eleven point zero is free. Eleven point one is not true. Yeah, so you, so you can, you can you always can... switch back and forth and, and try it out, I guess. Yeah, well, yeah. No, no, I, that's why I had it in my virtual. I was doing a lot of work, but then I bought a new PC and I only put 11.1 on it because of space constraint hard drive. So, but I guess um, I'd, I'd wait till Andy gave the all clear that he got it working. Yeah. Yeah.
So if that took care of all the of the of the GPF and everything else, then you won't have to do the debug event thing. Yeah, you're all set. That, that's very cool. Still not an MDI child window, but um, maybe that's, that's true. Just... It is still giving that error. Oh, we haven't seen one well, in a while, so no. Mm -hmm. But if you do get the MDI child uh -oh. error, then look at the debug view. Yeah, it's not remembering. Uh -oh. I'm having to enter that again. Maybe that's uh, what I'm going for. What you're saying, I'm trying to remember. Okay. Yeah, obviously, uh, you haven't set that up. So maybe it's just maybe it's getting up. to the. I think it's getting to be an old application, and its memory isn't what it used to be. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we change the. We're going to change the date again. All right. Last time. Then I'm. Last time. Heading for dinner. Yes. <laughs> uh, Thank you very much for sticking with me on this so long. Um, licenses. Get license. Hmm. I'll go check the debug again. Or ultimate, ultimate debug view, the bottom, the magnifying glass at the bottom. Huh, still hang up in the message. That's very strange. Mm. Still getting messages in there. Yeah, entering right. it. It's, you can see right above there, line 124. It says entering DS message, and then right underneath mm -hmm. it is entering DS message. That means the message is calling itself. Yeah. Somehow it's, it's, yeah. Can't do that. Aren't those on different threads? No. Uh, uh, well, well, it the says message different is, threads. yeah. One, yeah, first thread and second thread. They are mm -hmm. different threads. Interesting. That is strange, but it never leaves the first message. And yeah. it never leaves the second one either. So um, yeah, maybe it's not calling itself. I would have thought that security thing would have taken care of it. Is there any? Yeah. There's no hand code in there. In the no, but there might be. Yeah. Well, there might be, but there there might be one of the other extensions that's doing it as well. So you're gonna have to go through all of them. And okay, I can I can do that. That's a, a good troubleshoot. So shut off the other extensions one at a time and see if one is causing. Yeah. Is um, that all down? We, we did Something's find some... calling the message. I would put a log into the top, so a debug view into the top of the procedure so that I could see what the message was. So okay. when it came in, you at least see what the message is, and then that'll probably give you clues where it's coming from. Okay. But something inside that message is calling message, although it is on a different thread, but you said everything was in the one window, so I'm not sure what different threads are in play here. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, got each, each, it's a docking pane. So each of those um, things will have a different thread. Report control is in a separate procedure than the Chrome Explorer. That's yeah. a separate procedure. So you probably so don't want all of them. Five threads running, six mm -hmm. threads. You, prob you probably don't want all of them to have license checking. Probably only Go up to, to have license checking. See on the bar up there where it so, says thread, it says all. Go up there on the drop down. Oh, uh, uh, threads all, right yes. There. Yeah, look at, look at thread two. Yeah, yeah host well, main is the is the primary window. So Here's I would I would turn off um, license checking on everything oh. other than host main. Okay. What's on thread one? What's on thread one? That's got your login window, but it left there. Yeah, come all the way to the bottom. Okay, so that's got your main procedure. So I would. I, I wouldn't, you don't need license checking all over the place. You can just put it on the, um, maybe the main procedure or the host main, pick one of the two. Don't put it on okay. that. All right. David says, can it still be an asserting debug? It could be David. Um, so I, I haven't looked for a while. Once upon a time, you could get asserts um, inside 
uh, various places in the code where there was a critical procedure application. Now I reported it and last time I checked, a lot of it had been fixed, but you can't have an assert inside a critical procedure because, or after the, more accurately after the critical procedure object has been initialized because an assert is UI and you shouldn't have UI inside a critical um, piece of code inside a critical section or a critical procedure. Um, so there were a whole bunch of them in, in CW, uh, in, in, in AB Util. There were a whole bunch and there were some in AB file, but they were little, the ones in AB file were like with a database manager. I don't know what that thing is. Um, and the ones in AB Util, I think they're fixed. Um, last time I checked. But obviously, again, it's the difference between, I say last time I checked, that's 11.1. I don't know exactly when they fixed it. So I used to have to go into ABUtil and kill all the asserts that were in there that were inside something that had a critical procedure in it. Um, but like I said, I think they fixed that. So maybe that's, maybe you want to go back to 11.1 for now or Whatever. Yeah, yeah. That that window thing that what you just described was something I read in one of, and I was having issues with windows, and that made that go away. But um, yeah, I'm I'm gonna go bounce between the two, um, and um, you've given me a, a, a direction, and uh, now I'm gonna be using Ultimate Debug a lot more. Yeah. So, Good. Thank uh -huh. you so yeah. much. I have to do one it. more thing. See where your mouse is. Go up just a little bit. There's Open Procedures tab. Just click on that. So that should show you what procedure are, what procedures are open at the moment, or what were open. Post main, yeah. Put. Yeah, these are all open. Main, preview web. License message, message. I'm message. not sure why it's showing it so many times. I'd look at that. Okay, I okay. think you're good. Thank you so much, guys. Really, really, greatly appreciate it. Cool. What's happening on Friday, John? I have no idea. <laughs> Absolutely none. Um, is Mike doing it? I don't know. I know you're not because you just did one. And, that doesn't uh, mean anything in this world. <laughs> I haven't done one in a long time, but I just I just feel a little busy at the moment. I don't know that I can yeah. put anything together. Well, if Mike and Andy got around, I think Andy's still away. Um, I can do something, I'm sure. Andy is still away, yes. He's not going to be here this time, or is he going cool. to be here next next week? I don't think so. I don't know. Don't know. All, All right, right well, everyone, we'll don't forget to network tomorrow. Same time, same place. We'll see you all there. Yeah, that was fun, guys. See ya. First wave, not second enough, wave. Not enough drama, though, Bruce. Only six Third likes wave, still. Uh, I see. To, we'll pick a fight tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Did you need me to call you, John? Yeah, we can talk for a minute. Record.